Hey guys and welcome to this week's installment of Tuesdays with Lauri. My name is Lauri Laukkanen and I'm one of the editors at SLR Lounge. You can also find me on Facebook at Lauri Laukkanen Photography. In this week's installment of Tuesdays with Lauri, we're going to be breaking down this beauty photograph that I shot a few days ago. We're going to go through the image in Photoshop layer by layer and along the way I'm going to be explaining my decision making process and what I did and why I did what I did. But with that said, let's open up Photoshop and let's get started. So here you guys can see the image after the post processing that I did for the photo. And here you guys can see the photo uh, before any editing was done. So this is the image straight out of the camera. So as you guys can see what I did, I added a bit of texture on the wall. I retouched the skin and changed the color of it, got rid of some of the magentas and um, then just kind of mm, made sure that the makeup really popped in this photograph as this was a beauty makeup shot. So that's very important in this photograph and got rid of some uh, or kind of fix some things that I noticed along the way. So with that said, let's start taking a look at the layers one by one. So first I have a skin retouch layer here and you can see it from here. Uh, as you guys can see, I just kind of got rid of the biggest pores and then I have another retouch skin layer here that is affecting all the skin and the wall. So what it does, it kind of, it's almost like a surface blur, but not really. So how it works, I'll show you guys quickly is when I've done the skin retouch, I push down the shift, alt, command and E keys to create a stamp visible layer. Then I invert it and uh, change the blending mode from normal down to vivid light. Now this gives kind of us <clears throat> this sort of a high pass layer look. So now when we use the high pass, what it actually does is it gets rid of texture. So now I can blur the texture away like here by a radius of 6.6 .6 pixels, which get, which kind of get, gets rid of all the texture. And then by using the Gaussian blur, we can bring the texture back. Uh, this is definitely too much. Usually it's around, uh, well, it depends on the image, but you'll, you'll just zoom in close and uh, kind of start bringing back the texture until you like what you see. So that would be pretty cool. And that way it just kind of smoothen, smoothens out even more of the tiny little pores that you have in the image. Then I usually mask it away from the eyes and the hair as it really doesn't work around those areas that well. So let's get rid of this. And so this was my skin smoothening layer that I masked away from the hair and the eyes and eyebrows. Then I have a third skin retouch layer that I use to kind of finish up the skin retouch after the smoothening. When I do skin retouching, I use this black and white check layer uh, that shows all the pores. So if I take these skin retouch layers away, you can easily see all the pores in the skin. How this uh, check layer works is I use a black and white adjustment layer and just pull down the yellows and reds quite low so that the, con the image becomes really contrasty and you can see all the tiniest little details in the skin. So normally the black and white would look like this, but now just pulling the yellows and the reds will bring out those pores and you can start working on very tiny little details. And then, so this was my first skin retouch, getting rid of the big ones. Then I smoothened the skin a bit and then I got rid of some of the uh, pores around this area as well. So this was kind of the check layer that I used to kind of see uh, what I still need to fix. So that's the check layer, I can delete it now. And then we have the dodging and burning. So first I dodged all the shadows using the curves adjustment layer, just pulling down the mid tones and then masking out the areas that I wanted to dodge uh, or burn. And then I dodged some of the highlights, kind of brought back some details and Kind of the lighter the photo or the areas that are light are the ones that we look at and the areas that are dark are the ones that we really don't focus on as much. So that's why dodging and burning is a great way to kind of pull the focus from wrong parts to, to the parts that you want to focus on. In this case, the eyes and the face. Then I have here a layer that 
uh, adds noise on the sides of, of the image and uh, to below here and on the wall. So it's just a noise adding layer. I have masked out, masked, masked it out from the face so that it doesn't add noise on the face, which we really don't want. So then I have two curves adjustment layers. This one desaturates the legs and the lower parts of the image. And this one here just uh, darkens them a bit as they were a bit too light and they kind of pulled my focus away from the uh, face. Then we have a hue and saturation layer that just changed, changed the tone of the background just a tiny bit. It's not a very noticeable change. And then another hue and saturation layer that just pulls out the saturation of the yellows quite high. Then third hue and saturation layer that just fixes this hand here. I kind of didn't like the magenta tone of the hands, so I just got rid of that a bit and added a bit of yellow there. So it only affects the arm here and the fingers. Then we have a layer here that actually, oh yeah, this this layer, what this does is it gets rid of some of the uh, burnt out highlights that I had in this photo. So if you look closely around this area here and these areas here, they're a bit too bright in, in my opinion at least. So what I did, I selected some of the uh, areas from around the skin, picked the color, uh, now it's picking wrong colors, but I picked the color close by and painted over with a soft brush and then uh, used the a bit lower the opacity just a tiny bit down to 75% and then use the blend if command to blend the layer where the underlying layer is dark so that it only affects the brightest highlights of the photograph. And this way I kind of got rid of some of the burnt out highlights that I had in this photograph. Very tiny detail but it adds to the whole image. So then, uh, then I did some quick retouching on the leg and then the, I kind of felt that leg was a bit too dirty in a way because of the little pores that uh, just our, our legs are sometimes a bit dirty. So I thought I'll get rid of that. I did a surface blur and pulled down the opacity down to 50%. This gets rid of the texture. So what I had to do is I brought back some fake skin texture using the noise uh, add noise command and kind of just added a bit of this fake texture on top to kind of fake the texture of the skin and then did some minor skin retouching around this area here and this kind of fixed the dirty leg syndrome that I had and then I felt that the skin started to look quite nice so I started working on the walls I wanted to add some textures in the walls so that's what I did here first texture beneath then the next one on top and then the third one oh this one actually is not a texture as you guys can see from here what I did was I fixed this little hole in the hair that we have just a tiny de little detail that I noticed and I wanted to get fixed uh, then a third texture that I had here is that only brightens up just some areas of the photograph as you can see in the layer mask I made these kind of lines so it kind of just brightens the image randomly in some parts of the photograph. Then I have a curse adjustment layer that brightens up the eyes and a second curse adjustment layer that darkens the eyelashes. So this was my like eye dodge and burn layer uh, combination. Then I have a hue saturation layer that just got rid of some of the magentas that were left in the skin. So I got rid of that. And another hue and saturation layer that changed the color of the eyes back to what they were in the beginning because of the hue and saturation thing that I did for the wall it also affected the eyes so I just brought them back to the green tones that they were before so that's what I did there for the eyes and then uh, let's see what else we have here the last few layers we had a curves adjustment layer that just brightens up the knee and the back of the hand just a tiny bit and then another curse adjustment layer that brightens up the image as a whole, just a very tiny bit. As you can see, I just pulled the midtones very little up to kind of brighten the image. And then finally, the last uh, texture on the image, these white particles down on a low opacity of 60%, just to kind of add a bit of interest to the background. And then I have a layer here 
that actually doesn't do anything at all. At least I don't notice. So, oh, actually, yeah, now I remember, of course. If you take a closer look at the lips, I just added a bit of color to the lips with this layer. Kind of made them a bit more pink, but which was actually the natural co color that we chose for the lipstick. So I just kind of brought it back to what we were going for with the makeup. And then a hue and saturation layer that uh, desaturates this arm and brings it closer to this uh, saturation of the knee. And then my last layer, which is just a sharpen layer that sh sh sharpens down this lower part just a tiny bit, as well as some parts around here. So let's take a look at this whole process one more, once more. So before and after. As you guys can see, adding textures, making sure I did a good skin retouch on the photo and then making sure that the makeup that we did in real life can reflect, is kind of reflected in the photograph. So changing the color of the lipstick a bit and making sure the eyes really pop and all our focus in, is mostly in the face. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what I did for this photograph in Photoshop. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video and as always, if you have any questions or requests for future episodes, just leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you all out. Uh, make sure to like, share and subscribe and see you guys again next Tuesday. Bye.